So, whomst are youmst? Hello. For the viewers at home. Hello. For the viewers at home, I am Bucky Grant. I am a 20-something writer, voice actor, podcaster, video game designer, all-around notorious thing liker. (laughs) Notorious. I like that. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, the, the, I will say, I, I don't know if it's like the most prolific, but it's certainly the most prolific thing that you're the most involved in, but it's the Will at Homestuck podcast. Mm. Would you care to explain what that is? Because yeah. it, it has a very unwieldy title <laughs> in a good way, like a, in a funny way. Will at Homestuck? Question mark. Yeah, no, the question mark's important. As you a have whole to include noun. that. Yes. Um, <laughs> otherwise, it doesn't, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Exactly. Yeah, so so the Will at Homestuck podcast itself, I, I like to say it's where we take things and we put them in the Homestuck blender. So we class back mm-hmm. to non-Homestuck things that attempt to figure out what the hell we're going to do with that. Often, sometimes we just end at the class backing. Sometimes we do a part two episode and we drop all the characters into a suburb session and just do a writer's nice. room style fanfic write session, which is fun. Um and uh, and then associated with that, I have the Will at Homestuck Twitch channel where we stream f- uh, live reads of fan fiction every week. This week we did not because there is a there is a boycott of Amazon's products going on. It does not actually it is not officially endorsed by the union or by the by the um, Amazon workers who are attempting to form a union in Alabama, but the strike is in solidarity with them. I believe there is mixed information about whether or not that's going to help, but like. I think it's yeah. always a good day to not give Jeff Bezos more money. So yeah, I don't. Um, I don't actually use Amazon anyway. I thought that was just like a thing people did. I, like, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it's great that it's a week long thing. Don't get me wrong. And there right. are people who probably need to use Amazon for various services, but. Uh, uh, I mean, Amazon Web Services runs half the internet. Amazon is Whole Foods. They sure do. Uh, Twitch, Zappos, uh, like a bunch of other websites because they've gotten yep. their grubby little fingers and fucking everything. So it's it's very difficult to yeah. avoid Amazon, but we just... Uh, yeah, that's that's yeah. the... Um, <laughs> the So uh, I joked in one of the servers that it took me six minutes to get to anti-capitalism with, <laughs> with Janiya, and now it's... Let's 30 see seconds, buddy. Ever... Yeah, it's been two minutes. <laughs> but yes, the uh, yeah, the Amazon boycott, that's good. Uh, but back to the Will at Homestuck. Yes. As much as I do love to badmouth uh, Mr. Mr. Jeff Bozos. Uh, so you take a another franchise, for instance, my personal favorite episode, the Shrek one, <laughs> and you put, put, put that in a homestuck context and class spec these people what what is class specting yeah so um like a quick rundown of an episode is we do a plot summary we do a little plot analysis we do class spec mm-hmm. analysis we do shipping in quadrants because it is extremely indulgent to look at a property and go those two are are in yes. are deep deep in the pitch and i will not explain well, I mean, like, I will explain, but, like, I, I often don't explain why on the episode. I'm just like, yeah, these people, these people are pitch. Fuck you. And then the last is yeah. diagnosing the Vriska. But class specting <laughs> is a portmanteau of class and aspect from mm-hmm. the... Uh, Homestuck has that class and aspect system where everybody has sort of a D&D class, like a, like a right. witch or a knight or a That's seer. A and then the, the aspects are the, are the different facets of reality that you can have your powers based off of, like time and space and knowledge or bonds with other people and or piss or piss um and you (laughs) and uh there are a bunch of different the way i break it down is aspect is a character's like theme and and sort of the the visual and thematic elements that are associated with them and then their class is going to be their overall narrative journey and honestly breaking like those are pretty basic things in in literature analysis like you look at Mm -hmm. themes and you look at what the text tells you a character does and it's like we're really just doing like a live book report every time we do an episode (laughs) but it's so much fun that i don't care yeah that that is that is like the most boring way to put the exceptional like excitement (laughs) that goes into will and homestuck is like 
so so much of internet uh, analysis stuff. Because, like, book reports have this horrible reputation, right? Like, no one likes to do a book report. But you can, like, watch a video essay. That's, like, the cool book report. And it's so funny because that, like, that totally is... I don't know. I th- in my opinion, the, not the best YouTubers, but some of my favorite YouTubers are the people who are, like, clearly making videos about stuff they are currently hyperfixating on for funsies. Yep. And it's just for funsies. Yeah, that that is, like, um, I've been watching a lot of Karsten Runquist. Hmm. And that that is that that is him. He just makes videos about shit he has watched recently, which is amazing. Uh, or um, I assume I Patch Wolf. That's another good one. But it's hmm. the same process, right? It's like you know the same part of your brain that writes a book report is the same part of the brain that makes these people. It's just repackaged outside of a uh, uh, um, an academic situation, so it's interesting. Uh. I don't know. I was the type of kid who loved book reports. Yeah, I mean, I used to read so much that like reading a <clears throat> like sure. writing a book report was yeah, not necessarily it was it was definitely like a bit tedious, but like it's not like I yeah. didn't want to talk about a thing I just enjoyed. Sure. And get all those yeah, pizza for me, hut personal pan pizzas. Oh yeah. I remember those those little uh, book <laughs> challenges they'd have in school for like coupons and whatnot. That's crazy. I wonder if they still do that. I don't know. I don't know if there are enough, there are enough Pizza Huts open. I just have lived in a couple places where the Pizza <laughs> Huts closed. Yeah. That doesn't mean that Pizza Hut went bankrupt. It just means I, I've That's seen funny. less of them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Will and Homestuck is basically that, you know, book reports through the lens of, well, not book reports, but <laughs> literary analysis using its more uh, formal and cool-sounding name, literary analysis through the lens of Homestuck, using Homestuck's sort of framework as a base, which I think is very interesting because it's... uh, A lot of people have done, like, analysis into uh, Homestuck. For instance, there's Fridge Stuck, the series by that YouTuber. That's Mm. old. Uh, There's um, Optimistic Duelist's content, and there's Opacifica on Archive of Our Own and Twitter. And uh, I think it's interesting because it, a lot of people have an, analyzed the framework, but very few have actually gone ahead and, like, class-spected other stuff. Like, there's a couple from Optimistic Duelist, but Will at Homestuck is, like, certainly the most comprehensive. And I, I, I gravitated towards it because it was, like, it was filling that niche for me. It's, uh, yeah, so, like... The one of the biggest things about this for me is like like you're right. Uh, Optimistic Duelist or Rose of Nobility does uh, did a couple of episodes on Steven Universe, I think, and I believe that he also talked about U- U- Revolutionary Girl Utena or U- Utena. Mm. Uh, Shira, I think, uh, was the most recent. Well, that oh. was last Sakon. They uh, they did a. I thought Shira they did one. Steven Universe Part Two at Sakon with Pearl. You might be right. At, oh no, you're right. Oh. It's uh, Pearl and Amethyst, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's not. not uh, I, not whatever I said. <laughs> God, we we were actually planning on doing a Shira one last summer until the crew put mm-hmm. all of their feet in their mouths, and I was like, maybe it wouldn't be appropriate uh, to do this right now. Yeah, and bedtime. <laughs> I still have mixed feelings on it because, like, I really liked the show, but that left such a bad taste in my mouth knowing that that yeah. was going on behind the scenes the whole time. Yeah, that's a big oof. Uh, we won't get into that for. We won't get into that. For, um, if you're if you're curious, you know, just Google it. But the yeah, uh, yeah I think that the as a oh because a, a big thing in in my sphere is uh, analysis through like a, a framework, right? Yeah, and that's and a huge part of it. I was gonna say um, one of the biggest things for me is that like uh, like we've seen people dip their toes into it, but like. Class specting analysis, you have one or two or maybe, if you're lucky, three data points on each class and aspect, mostly yeah. one or two. And that is not a lot of data to be drawing conclusions from. I respect right. the hell out of both uh, Optimistic Duelist, O Pacifica, Argus, all the people, uh, Blade Kind of Eyewear. Mm-hmm. Uh, in 
Infinity Whale, I think, was a Tumblr blog years ago. Yeah. Um, I haven't personally watched Fridge Stuck, but uh, I've I've like seen it around in my recommendations. Like those mm-hmm. people have done a lot of groundwork and a lot of really important analysis into what is actually in the text, and that is super yeah. duper duper I cool. Agree. However, you are extrapolating from two points of data, and yes. I. I kind of, I'm just like, fuck it. Where else do themes like this show up? Because people are all, yeah, people yeah. already do that. People already love assigning, like, uh, Myers-Briggs personalities yeah, yes, to yes, other yes, characters. Exactly. This is the same shit. It's, um, it is, uh, in my opinion, it's even more legitimate than something like that because instead of Myers-Briggs or astrology, which purports to, you know, this will unlock your insides and you can know more about yourself, this is completely and totally fictional right yeah like this is a fictional framework so no it's 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 more at least if not realistic than honest um but i agree the the thing i like about well at homestuck is it is kind of doing what these class spec spelunkers are doing but backwards so instead of saying this is the class spec and this is what it means you guys are more saying like this is this character and this is why they're that class spec instead of saying Instead of trying to assign traits to the class specs themselves, you are assigning the class specs as traits, if that makes sense. Yeah, because, like, we know that these are supposed to be relatively universal concepts that a lot of people are going to fall right. into. And there are whatever the, like, 144, whatever the math works out to, combinations of classes and aspects, yep. even before you add in Lunar Sway, uh, that, like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of combinations I have a comp side degree. Sure. I should know the formula to do that. I refuse to remember it. <laughs> um, the, That's fair. Uh, but, like, there are going to be... A, we don't really know which traits are endemic to the class or aspect and which are just coincidental. So, like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I do peddle Will at Homestuck as a comedy podcast, not in the least because I do not take myself seriously. But sure. the... Well, that's a lie. I take what I do seriously, but I do not take the things that I say on my podcast very seriously. Um, right, right. Yeah, that but, makes sense. But uh, basically, like, a, a lot of it is just, oh, this character gives me this vibe, or oh, this character, I'm getting, mm-hmm. I'm getting a certain impression off of them. This is what I think that their theming is. And the yeah. really important part is that it's a conversation. It's not just me writing yes. an essay. Every single episode has at least two hosts, and it is a conversation. I don't even have to yeah, appear on the episode. Huge. Anybody can make an episode. But the important mm-hmm. bit is that you're talking to somebody else and you're bouncing ideas off of each other. Uh, certainly. I think that's the... And I wanted to get to that, the sort of conversational aspect of the... Uh, analysis which um what what i like to think of it is every sort of analytical piece is trying to advance a dialectic and i know that you know that that's a pretentious way of saying basically what you said which is (laughs) everything is a conversation you know and that that's what i like about the way that you approach this which is basically very conversational very um one of the best things is if you try to class spec to anyone or anything, you will always get a conversation out of it because you'll have disagreements. Like, for instance, you know, in, in a, I don't remember which server this was in, so you might have been witness to it. But I said something like, you know, the Doom guy's a player of Doom. And someone <laughs> else said, no, he's rage because he's always pissed off. And you I get these kind of conversations about, like, Uh, Because my my first gut instinct is, no, of course he's not a Doom player. He's there to fuck up the system on Mars. He's got to be, like, uh, Rage is good, but... Yeah, exactly. Or or maybe that plays more into a destructive class. I don't know. I don't know. It's a conversation. Sure. Exactly. And uh, neither. I, I I think that the most important part about this is, since it is a subjective framework, you know, no one's wrong, right? Like, I'm not wrong, and you're not wrong, and... Because it's fictional, these are not mutually exclusive. And I like that because it's a it's very perspective heavy, right? Like what do you think about this work and what do you think about this class spec? Uh, and more broadly, to the question of like, what is the point of analysis? This is the point that I think a lot of people miss and one that uh, I particularly like Will of Homestuck for. 
Uh, but what do you make of this, the sort of subjectivity of not just Homestuck analysis, but of analysis in general? It, it's really easy to get caught up in the idea that analysis aims to show a truth, but yes. it more often is seeking to show you a certain perspective. If you're um, mm-hmm. Lindsay Ellis's series on the Transformers through a bunch of different film analysis lenses is a really good example of this because she takes the trans for the Michael Bay Transformers series and looks at it through there's like a couple of traditional film analysis lenses and then a queer theory lens and a Marxist theory lens and a feminist theory lens and none of those are wrong and none of them mm-hmm. are completely right they are just saying what does the field of this particular study say about this particular work I've right. joked before that Will Homestuck is a Hushian analysis. I think I'm going to try to move away from that because, like, it's not for him. It's for the fans. I don't give a f- I don't actually <laughs> care about yes. the dude who, who, like, coined these terms. I, yeah. I care about, like, what we, the fans, have been doing with it. So I'll, yeah, I'll figure out what to call it. Maybe we'll call it the Grantian dialectic or whatever because that's my last name. But, like, the... Uh, <laughs> that, that sounds very official. I like that. Grantian dialectics. The Grantian uh, <laughs> dialectic. <laughs> oh fuck. Well, here's what you got to yeah. do. You got you got to come up with like really thinly veiled euphemisms for all the class specs so that it's not like copywritten. <laughs> and then you got you got to make like your own version of Twelve Rules for Life <laughs> or something. I mean- it's not like any of the individual terms that go into into a class spec can be copyrighted. Like that's true. Yeah. Sylph, blood, hope, yeah. breath. <laughs> yeah. Copyrightable terms. You're right. You're right. You can just steal it. <laughs> not that I I'm probably couldn't literally that, say but... class spec, but that. Right. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I think did class spec originate? Did the your word ass, class spec? Ass aspect class your ass what's your ass what's your ass yeah that yeah <laughs> nailed it i guess that's why Sorry, they didn't pick the other portmanteau <laughs> oh I, I was just wondering like if the if the portmanteau class spec actually came from inside homestuck the comic or if a fan coined it right i, I guess uh, it the first matter. time i ever saw it was on the wiki and uh those people so the people on the wiki whenever i go on the wiki i'm always struck by two different feelings the first feeling is Jesus Christ, you have combed this entire fucking comic so heavily and my um my 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 gratitude and my admiration goes out to you. And then in the same vein, I'm struck with like you guys fucking suck. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because I it's mean, so bad. <laughs> uh the wiki has improved dramatically over time. It has, I should say way. this. Um, uh, I yeah, also definitely. real quick, if Gara a Tumblr user Gara of Suburbia, if you are listening, thank you for for working on the MSPA wiki. And also, it was cool to I still have a picture of you in your Caliborn cosplay from 2014 Kineticon. That's it. Just just a shout is, out to somebody who specific couch shout out. I love that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I just recently refollowed them. Them. I need to double check yeah. their neo pronouns, but I think. I think they were one of the first people I ever saw online to use neo pronouns, and like, nice. I don't know, Homestuck fandom like took a big baseball bat that was labeled gender and sexuality and swung it in my direction. Not Homestuck, yep. the Homestuck fandom specifically. I want to be clear on this; yeah. it was the fans of it. Yes, I think that uh, it, it's something that struck me was Homestuck is uh, again, like you said, not the not the work, but the fandom. I don't know if this is just because I'm so close to it, but I, I've been in other fandoms like the the Brony fandom or the uh, this is back of the day, but like Steven Universe, uh, other other things like Harry Potter, and this is the most queer fandom I've ever been beholden to, and I think it's because really and. It, it's it's really second only to Shira, and I think it's because, unlike all these other fandoms, like Hussey, I don't I don't think he was he you know, I'm not gonna say anything about his personal politics. That's not a topic for right now. But at the very very least, he was like ambivalent to gay people, <laughs> right? 
Like, he was like, yeah, gay people can happen in my comic. I don't really give a shit. So he was at least not censoring them. Um, and I think that just opened that... the fucking floodgates. Yes, exactly. Not, Rosemary was only the second, um, like, gay couple I'd ever seen in media besides, like, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer with Tara and Willow, which was, you know, that was, like, the quintessential barrier gaze. I don't know if you've ever seen Buffy, but... I have not, and honestly, with revelations about Joss Whedon, I don't think I ever will. Josh, Josh Weedman, <laughs> as he's known. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's. I think it's worth watching because so many other um, industry professionals were part of it. But mm. there is that there is that very Whedon esque um, stank, I will say. Yeah. Uh, but um, but yeah, like in 2012, it was in 2012 and 2014, it was a pretty fucking big deal that like, yep. like, uh, the phrase "all ships are canon" like now in 2021, get, like skeeves me yeah, out a little yes. bit because I know people used it for evil. But when Andrew <laughs> Ooh, Hussey, oh yeah, oh I don't like to think about that. <laughs> I don't like to think about but it either. Yes. But but when Andrew Hussey first said that, not only did this it did open a floodgates for people to just like indulge in any rare pair they wanted, but it was a it felt a little bit like a fuck you to the people who were like, um, well, sweaty, you can't like these characters are like straight and you can't like do anything with them that isn't yeah. like straight because that's like canon. And then yeah. like Andrew Hussey was like, exactly. no. Do, that, do that was, literally whatever you want. And then... Yes. Uh. Yes. That was huge back in the day. That was enormous. Like, uh, even even after Homestuck with, with uh, media franchises like Voltron, there was this <laughs> huge feeling of, if it's not canon, you can't write about it because it hurts my feelings. And right. And it's why it's just... so frustrating that we've returned to that. Like, that was always my the, right. my favorite part about the Homestuck fandom. I always said, like, I never have an experience like I did in the Homestuck fandom again. And I still stand by that, but for some different reasons. Well, but, like, I, I'll, I'll never have an experience like that again of, like, the the fan fiction and fan works that were being produced weren't one coffee mm-hmm. shop AU after another. Like, they were, <laughs> there were people who were oh, writing no. par- parodies. <laughs> High school of, AU. <laughs> high school au college au like there are people doing genuinely interesting things i i like out of more recent examples i think of uh uh ao3 user fleece's uh lady stuck fic bissis is a jade faff fic where um yeah it was jade faff where uh jade i don't know jade and feffery are are like witches and jade's a werewolf and then and also a witch and she has to go fucking tight it's got all this really intricate botany information because the fleece knows a lot Shit. about botany and it's, it's such a good read. It's one of the first things we started reading out loud because of how nice it was or, or That's think about awesome. all of, Je- all of Janiya's works or like right. the, your the, golden the, age the fan fiction authors. <laughs> yes. Mi- one million words of fan fiction, your golden age fan fiction or your golden age homestuck era authors like jumping Jack trash or paratactician or uh, cold hope that would write, these really intricate, um, right? Uh, really intricate AUs. Like a uh, paratactician in particular did a a retelling of Bride's Head Revisited <laughs> called Strider's Edge. That like I don't remember how well it holds up. We tried reading the Vienna game, which I loved in high school, and it was like painfully heterosexual, so I couldn't even finish reading it again. <laughs> but uh, yeah. like those those fix were like. I don't know, an elaborate cyberpunk heist AU, or uh, where, like, the beta kids are are AIs that the trolls have to free from the Condess's control, or, like, all of this... And then, like, I go to the fucking Voltron fandom, and they're like, what if... Uh, what if a character from a timeline where these two characters were dating fell into a timeline where they weren't? I'm like, all right, this is like, this is like baby steps, y'all. Where's the, uh, yeah. where's the elaborate cyberpunk heist? Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I also not to derail, but just I just have to say, your your capacity for remembering names is seriously impressive. I could, I fucking do not. I don't even look at the fucking writer name half the time on Ao3. I'm just, uh, I'm astounded. All I did in high school was read fan fiction, scroll Tumblr, yep. and not pay that, a lot during class. <laughs> that is a huge mood. Um, I, I do remember very distinctly um, in college, I I had an anime wallpaper. I had a, this huge clunky 1999 laptop that had Windows 7 that I like stole from the internet on it. <laughs> um, and I... I 
I like was reading home, Homestuck fan fiction, mm-hmm. and I remember uh, there was this girl Cassie. Shout out to Cassie if you're listening, who uh, saw me reading Homestuck fanfic and was like, "Hey, is that a archive of our own?" I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> what what anime is that? Asking me about my wallpaper, and it was like, "Oh my god." I actually met someone through that because I wasn't oh. paying attention in fucking math. It was awesome. I was, I remember in my freshman year sitting in the break room in the comp side department. I was wearing my space shirt that I got from the Homestuck Kickstarter because I was a fucking Kickstarter back, backer, baby. And nice. uh, regret that decision. Uh, but <laughs> um, I was wearing it and this Oops. dude, this like 27 year old army vet walks in and he sits out right in Fuck. front of me. He's like, I'll bet you thought you were going to get away with wearing a Homestuck shirt and having nobody comment on the fact that you were wearing a Homestuck shirt, but I just want you to know that I know. I was like, hi, Robert. (laughs) And that's how I met Robert. That's really funny. He he was a really good DM, and he used to wear a base... It was a a trucker baseball cap with a floral underside of the brim, and it it had a black baseball cap and big white letters across the front. It said S-U-C-C, and that was his GMing hat. (laughs) Fucking... Shout out to Robert. He sounds like a legend. Shout out to Robert. Absolute uh, fucking legend. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. An, uh, Homestuck. But Hamstick. Back back to the analysis track. <laughs> um, one of the things we spoke about last time we tried this, which for the viewers at home, uh, we are we. This is the second take <laughs> <laughs> because the first one I recorded it in OBS and it got like corrupted. Oh god. Um which is very funny to me because I listened back to it and it was like uh, y- you could hear both of us but it was like crackling. But the uh the th- one of the things we talked about was like the how analysis like people come up with like 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 you said before answers. People try to find answers. And one of the things you mentioned was the sort of uh this wasn't a good approach, but why isn't this good a good approach? Because a lot of the YouTube content that people watch is like X is bad and here's why, or you know X explained, like this movie X explained or something like that. So yeah, why is this approach? Why why is the dialectic sort of conversational approach better than an answers driven approach? In your opinion, besides the bit where I'm a gigantic fucking communist, JoJo. <clears throat> <laughs> yes besides, besides the fact that we're a bunch uh, of fucking dirty leftoids yeah besides that um well i mean it's partially just because it's so subjective like there are no right answers here like in the literally the only case where i can think of where i could class back to a, a, a bunch of characters and then have the creator tell me whether or not yeah. i was right was extreme meat punks forever by heather flowers because she has stated that she had class specter- class specs for the characters in her game already <laughs> created when she was making That's it because funny. she is a homestuck you should play extreme meat punks forever it's about meat mechas in uh, it's about antifa meat mech fighters. Isn't isn't meat mechas just what we are? Bigger. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, sure. it's a good question. Um, but but yeah, like so. There's there's no way I could check my answers on these. There's the, all, any answer I am gonna give is sure. gonna be entirely subjective opinion. So like, if somebody was like, um, actually, in the Shrek episode when you said that uh, that Shrek couldn't possibly be a knight of blood and also a dark streamer because like I know that you guys are trying to say that Shrek and Carcat are the same character, and wow. I know that you think you're right, but I think you're wrong. I'd be like, okay, well that I don't I don't think that yeah. I don't think that those two ideas can't coexist. You're, you, like, exactly. Shrek is super the car cat of Shrek, but, like, the, <laughs> the um... Of Shrek. <laughs> he is! Shrek is a movie Fuck. about people who are horribly insecure with themselves, and Shrek in particular is horribly insecure about being an outcast from society exactly. who is kill on sight, who uh, can't stand to ever actually show his true feelings to anybody and, and hides it under uh, outward aggressiveness. I agree. Uh... <laughs> I couldn't agree more, frankly. And if you wanna, if you wanna learn more about how Shrek is actually Carcat, go listen to Will at Homestuck. The link's on screen. <laughs> I, uh, funnily uh, enough, there is a worse class spec than that in the episode. But I'll leave it up to you to find out what oh, that is. We, we, we can like, we can tease that one. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. 
but but basically, like because there's no right answer, and because I don't know, because there's no right answer, that's important. And then mm-hmm. at the same time, like I don't think I could ever claim to be an authority on class specting like i i know that i have a podcast on class specting and i'm producing a series about character archetypes in homestuck right. like how to diagnose a ca- i guess i'm calling it how to diagnose a blank i don't know i've done Vriska and cronus premieres this friday at the time of recording but yes. um the uh I, I don't know i i i i take my little brain i take my little eyes i read what people say about class specting i go ooh, that sounds good and then i like look at the hbo television show westworld and i'm like i think mave is the vriska and then i like kind of dust my hands off i'm like yeah that's perfect like i yeah i have my political science minor i do my readings i i like i try to continue i, I try to always be learning always continue learning because it it's good for you, but, like, I'm not the type of person who's going to churn out a 4,000-word essay. A lot of what I talk about is either off the dome or based on minimal notes or, like I said earlier, based on vibes. And, like, honestly, given that we have so little data and that we're just (laughs) attempting to add to it by, like, speculating about other characters, it's, it's just... What it really boils down to is it's way more fun for me if I don't take it seriously. I could take it super seriously, yeah. and I could say, this is the answer, this is the that's class specs explained. But that's not fun for me. I don't, I also, if somebody was like, well, you're wrong. If I claim that it's the definitive answer, then I look like I have egg on my face if they have a reasonable right. uh, justification for why I'm wrong. But if it's conversation and they have a reasonable justification for why I'm wrong, I can say, damn, that's better than what I came up with. Cool. Mm-hmm. I, I like I could say that in the other situation anyways, it's just a lot easier to do that if you set it up so that you can engage in yes. a dialogue instead of preaching to an audience. I agree. Uh, w- one of the things that I think is useful about sort of this, the, the analysis that you're doing and the analysis that is happening in a broad sense on YouTube is it's being removed from an academic context. Mm. And this is important, not because I think that teachers teach things wrong, because most of the teachers I had on a college level were very open with, like, you know, the dialectic or, you know, you, there is no interpretation that is correct. All you have to do is support it through your, uh, you know, thesis. But at the same time, there's a teacher grading you on this. So there's this sort of hierarchy that I don't like of, you know, these – because I, I I think that you can teach something like – calculus or you can teach something like i don't know physics but you can't really teach um like literature in the same way but they are taught in the same way they're taught like you know this is a skill you learn this is you know a a a formula you have to apply to media and i don't agree with that and uh my mom who is an educator would disagree that that is the point of academic analysis um well but that... it, it, like the, these people who have degrees or have doctorates or are professors, their opinions are prioritized in, in these situations. And what I love about, you know, YouTube or Will at Homestuck or whatever is it's removed from that context where any asshole can advance the dialectic for better or worse. You know, you can have people who are fucking chuds who can just get on your comment section. But at the same time, if you're really putting a lot of effort and, and, and thought into it, you know, you're just as valid as as some old person with a random piece of paper. And part of it for me is also that there are different ways of doing literary analysis, and I was introduced to one in college that I took to a lot more than your standard, like, 10th grade English class literature analysis, is because, Mm like, I don't know, you you hear the joke that, like, why do I ever need to know why the author think, said that the curtains are blue? Is it, are the curtains sure. blue because the author's depressed? And, like, that the, the joke there is you can't ever know why the author chose a particular thing. You can only pour your own interpretation into it because that's what art is for, is for finding out what your reaction to it is. But, right. like... You hear that the siren? Thing, the thing is that. that, like, uh, English... Standard English literature analysis says, look at the book as you interpret it with no outside context other than your interpretation and tell me what you think. However, 
if you take a political science class and you take a political science class that's going to look at fictional literature, they tell you, hey, here's a bunch of stuff about the author's life. Here's the context in which they wrote it in. Here's some other philosophies that they were trying to do in this story. Here's yeah. uh, like here's some other stories that are related to it. They're contemporary to it. They either disagree with it or agree with it. Now with all of this context, what do you think that this that this piece of art means? Neither of those yeah. are technically wrong, but I like the the political science approach better where you take the thing in context. You do not you may let the author die, but they are in a glass coffin and you are yeah, looking the, the at the way they dead, live their life. But he's still he still made the book pretty much. The author is dead but did not never exist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh I I think that the de- death of the author in my opinion kind of poisoned <laughs> like and just analysis in general because of that reason because it it gave because what it was trying to do was say you know uh the context of what the author thinks does not necessarily matter you can you know you can analyze it outside of that context that should not be prioritized but what people took it to mean was well i can listen to eminem even though he said all that horrible stuff about women <laughs> yeah and it's like okay maybe maybe not that it's uh, because, like, the thing is, is that you can't divorce an author from their, or an artist from their work entirely. Yeah. You can't listen to Eminem and go, oh, wow, I'm so glad he stopped saying those things about women. Because, one, his old music still exists. And, two, right. I don't know fuck about recent Eminem. So, yeah. like, if, I, if, if this isn't true, I'm so sorry, multi-million dollar rap artist Eminem. But, like, yeah. sure in the hypothetical we're, we're, situation we're where he's super is still Eminem. a massive misogynist... Then that doesn't like now you're just continuing to support an artist who's doing fucky shit. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, I, I think that what's important that you brought up is context is very important, and mm-hmm. you 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 can place things in different contexts. Uh, one of the ways that I see this online is, um, I post a lot of critique on my YouTube channel, and a lot of times I get, um sort of people trying to refute the critique on either have you heard of of the thermian argument or the um, uh i know that i've watched folding ideas video on it but run it by me again yeah it's the it's the idea that you know you are using something inside of the text to mm. excuse for instance the quintessential it's okay that she's nude she breathes through her skin thing <laughs> uh, you know that, kojima. that, that yes thank you kojima um I think that was actually a misattribution. Like they didn't. Oh. Um. They they asked Kojima why he did that, and he was just like, "Yeah, I just like sexy women," which <laughs> I don't I don't know if that's better or worse, but at least he's honest. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Like. <clears throat> uh. But yeah, same shit. Like. Uh. Yeah. She breathed through her skin. Vriska couldn't have actually. No. Never mind. No, I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm um, not gonna open the Vriska can of worms. Uh, I'm a Scorpio. I wrote an entire essay about why Vriska oh, is important and why I like to why I like to find the Vriskas in Will at Homestuck and yeah. uh, and why it's really important to me that we look for women who are as fucked up and and uh, yeah, just as fucked up as Vriska. Yeah. However, yes, I will reserve my opinion. <laughs> I think that Vriska. Well, Vriska was the first. Like again, uh, I don't think the hussy is quote-unquote revolutionary he was just doing this in a time where it didn't exist much and Vriska is one of the first female characters who is allowed to be as messy as a man in other yeah. media like is allowed to be that anti-heroic um because that's what she is i think at the end of the day is an anti-hero uh but yeah the the um just the space where that can happen uh but to, to the critique point uh i i see a lot of this People fail to understand that there could be another interpretation of a work, right? Like, um, people will say, for instance, I had a video about Chihiro from Dangin Ranpa, and I said, basically, mm-hmm. you know, from this lens, this is really harmful as a stereotype to perpetuate. And people came at me with, like, mainly they were just arguing that Chihiro was a boy in canon, which is never something I, I disputed. And... So I guess my my point is, how can you make the layman understand that, you know, art has 
different lenses that you can look at it from and trying to get people to understand like if something is critiqued that is what people are doing Uh, i mean like the my answer on that is honestly stop cutting arts funding from our fucking public (laughs) schools that is fucking huge one stop cutting art funding two no more standardized tests three You need to teach people actual fucking life skills. And, like, you, what does that have to do with art, Bucky? If you don't know how to make a cake or follow a recipe, you're going to have problems with other things, including analysis. Like, I I know that seems like a bit of a stretch, but, like, you... Excuse me. When you make a a recipe, you follow it for the first time, and you're following subjective instructions that somebody has tailored to their cooking environment. And as Mm -hmm. you make that recipe more and more, you learn how to adjust it for your own cooking environment. Where to place things in the oven, what temperature to use, what actual weight or volume of, of ingredients to use, what flavors you like in it. And, like, or... Building building something with your hands, building a cabinet and being able to actually level and square off stuff. Those are those are important things for spatial reasoning and like seeing a project from start to finish and a whole bunch of things that make you appreciate art more. And then mm-hmm. if you don't cut art, if you remove standardized testing, then you're starting to move away from this idea that there are right and wrong answers every single time. And y- you need to move towards an educational system that is more about thinking about why things are and less yeah. setting people up to work in a factory for the rest of their lives. Yeah, I, I think there's a real paralysis uh, in analysis where people are very, they're, they're, like you said, they're not given the tools or skills to do this stuff. And I think that there's this paralysis of, well, I don't want to decide what this means. That's a big job. And it's not hard. You know, you, you've probably already sort of decided what a piece of media means without even realizing it. And really the, the analysis thing is just you articulating that in some coherent way, because, you yeah. know, if, if you watch Fight Club, you know, if some if some straight guy who doesn't know how to fucking analyze anything, he watches Fight Club, he can tell you, oh, that was awesome because, you know, it was cool and, and th- those dudes are going their own way and they're not bound by, like, society, man. It's like that's that's analysis. You know, that's, that's a form of analysis. It might not be, you know, It's a pretty shallow deep. one. It's, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> but, but it's still... But... But yeah. they got, but they got a message from the movie. Every piece mm-hmm. of art wants to get, wants you to experience some sort of message. You don't necessarily have to match up with what with what they were trying to get you to understand, but you'll get something. They got the surface level message that this is cool sure. and that this is and this is what our society encourages. And then the the next level below that is yeah, society encourages this, this sort of behavior. But like, was that really good? Was this was this really beneficial to to the people yeah. involved here? And then. The layer after that is gay, 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 homosexual, gay, <laughs> but uh, yeah, as, as especially it goes. in Fight Club. But um, yeah, like just I don't know. I that that really ties into a, the larger problem of we exist in a in a heavily Christianized society that encourages moralizing black and white thinking. And the less that we have yes. Christianity in our in every aspect of our lives, the more that we have the more that we have teachers who are not overworked, underpaid, underfunded, and subject to insane yes. subject to unreasonable standardized testing scores and common core curriculum and all of that. The more we yeah. like gear our education towards producing people who can how do I put this? Independent is the wrong word because no human is independent. You will, you cannot live a life without people helping you from the moment you're born until the moment you die. Nobody can make all of their own furniture or all of their own food or build the, build all of their own shelter or take care of all of their like you. The, you need yeah, other people. We are pack exactly. animals for a reason. No, but, no matter how much you idolize Ron Swanson, you will never be a, an island. Ron Swanson also is not entirely independent because Ron Swanson relies on a lot of people. He sure does. Uh, but like, the sooner like, the, like to go back to my earlier point of being a, being a filthy fucking leftist, like the so much of my of my perception of what's going on is tailored to the idea that we 
we're we're way behind on fixing stuff that's going wrong. Mm-hmm. Like I not to quote fucking Phil Collins, but you know, they were saying our generation will put it right in the nineteen fucking eighties and uh mm. looks at my watch. How 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 did that <laughs> go, boomers? It's a little late. Uh yeah, they've been using late capitalism since the uh, 1860s. They've been using that for almost 200 years. Uh, right. We, we gotta, there's we gotta, no... Th- there's got to be some kind of... What's the word for when society sort of spins? Like a, Stagnation? A, sort of sort of revolves in some way. There's sort of some kind of... Some Re- some s- revolution of some kind. <laughs> Regression? I... Uh... No, you're actually you're making a joke and I'm yes. fucking up. But, uh, <laughs> but I don't know. Basically, like... There's no way that things are going to improve unless we start thinking about it all the time. And one of the ways to do that is to, to like, break out of this Christian purity, uh, Christian purity politics of, like, a char- if a character is not, like, if, as long as they don't have impure thoughts and you're not, like, thinking about bad things and you're not doing, you're looking at bad things or doing bad things, everything will be fine. And it's so... Yeah. There's legitimately fucked up things that go on in fandom. People get groomed. People get hurt. People are exposed to things that they don't want to see. And the the response to that is not, well, you just need to let people do what they want. Uh, it's take responsibility for your actions. Seriously think about, like, what happened in your life that may lead you to enjoy certain things. And, like, I don't know, the the whether or not you really agree with that and then well the most important for me is like i was 15 when i started reading homestuck for the first time i was born Mm -hmm. in 1996 i am the same age as the main characters in homestuck they would be in my year in in school because like because they were all because you know uh you you met you met rose lalonde yeah i met rose lalonde i I grew up i grew up in connecticut you know right new york you're new york's not that far away you just drive over to rainbow falls uh but (laughs) no um badass but I, but I was 15 when I started reading Homestuck in early 2012, and I, I got dumped into a fandom that did not. The creator of that work did not lay out any community guidelines or any ways to interact with his work, especially when mm-hmm. the MSPA forum stopped being the main in- place to talk about them, and then finally went defunct with no replacement and t- up until Class Spectanon took reset. over. The MSPF, the MSPA XYZ forums. Shout but, out to uh, Class Spectanon for doing that, and also um, just like pick a day, they're they're doing a pick a yeah, day. Yeah, right like now. they are uh, incredible. Maybe I, I gotta interview them next. Like shit, they like I feel like uh, Class Spectanon is like the person that Machin wants to be, like bringing people <laughs> together and doing all these projects and like. I don't know. Yes, we, Seeps <laughs> just like actually gives a fuck about other people. Yeah, because uh, I, I, like also Seeps. I feel like everyone fucking knows Seeps because, um, my friend they're, Roxy. They're... I met them, and nuclear. Uh no, different. So here's the thing. <laughs> There's like a million fucking Roxies. I know. <laughs> in in Homestuck, and um, I think we're 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 so we've so it used to be. That there was this wave of trans masks named Dave, whom I know many of. Um, then there was this wave of trans femmes in uh, named Roxy, and now yep. we're sort of getting into these um, th- this new era where it's like uh, the Junes are taking yep. over now, and, and I see Dirks. a lot of people named Junes. I haven't seen there the Dirks. Are, I that's, know that's, that's that's foreboding, but yes, Dirk I is know. huge. No, listen. There's, there's, there's Twitter and Tumblr listen. using Turing tested, whose name is Alexander something Strider. I think oh, it's yeah. Alexander Dirk oh, Strider. And yes. then there's another one in my town Fucking when I was legend. still on Facebook. There was another person whose legal name was Dirk Strider, who's not Turing tested. Oh my god! There's, there's Shout at out least to two of them. I love Turing you guys. Tested. That's awesome. You're that's so like fucking a... powerful. Yeah, that's a power move. Um. I mean, I named myself Bucky after the fucking Winter Soldier, so it's not like I can fucking talk. There you go. That's good. I mean, every trans person I know, either they they do one of two things, depending on how, like, I don't know, for lack of a better term, how, like, well-adjusted they are. They either (laughs) name themselves something similar to their own dead name, because, like, you know, they have friends in real life and they don't want to change it too much, 
or they go ape shit and they like pick <laughs> their favorite character from the thing they're currently hyper fixated on and they just name themselves that and it's not always their favorite character sometimes it's like man i really liked phoenixes my name is phoenix now yeah exactly it's either something like you know oh well uh my name my name was dave so now i'm dana uh, hi uh, that's my new name now or it's uh, I resonate on a spiritual level with the polar bear. So my name is now Polar Bear. You can call me Mr. Bear. And it's like both uh, of them are equally powerful. I love yes. them. Yes. I mean, my, my name is Bucky Grant, as in James Buchanan Barnes and Stephen Grant Rogers. So, uh, That's good. There you go. It's the same naming <laughs> conventions that, like, J.K. Rowling used to name the kids in the prequels. It's like Harry oh. just picked, like, the people. Oh, no. I shouldn't have I shouldn't have made that connection. <laughs> God. <laughs> anyway. But this, this Yeah, but I'm leads... cool and transgender and gay, and, and she's yes. named these things and can die. I fucking... I don't, I don't, I don't think that J.K. Rowling should die. I think she should shut the fuck up forever, though. We all die someday, JoJo. I mean, it's ideally a specter is haunting Europe. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) Uh, In Minecraft, (laughs) Uh, it's it's uh, the specter of Prince Philip. Yes. Oh God, that that uh, imagine like how fucked up is your society if your name is Prince Philip and you're like 80 years old? (laughs) I I feel bad for that guy. The poor mother. I mean, I super duper don't for a lot of reasons because he's, but it right. literally all it means is he married the queen and he wasn't royal before then. But uh, <sighs> I don't know. Let's uh, all right. Fuck so for dude. the next topic, let's talk about the morality <laughs> of the royals in in Britain. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, fucking... They invented racism and therefore deserve the guillotine <laughs> first. They invented ra- Say, what have we made a word no, no. that made people feel marginalized and then no, hurt no, them sorry, forever sorry. for it? They invented race. Full stop. We didn't have yeah. we didn't have imperialism and, and white people before the British Empire was like, huh, we could make a lot of money off of that. I mean, to some extent there there was race, but it was much a much more uh I only know this because I watched like I, I wish I could remember who made this, but it was like this fucking video essay about like it, w- it was, like, an hour and 40 minutes long. It was the only video on their channel other than, like, a gameplay video. And I cannot find it to this day, but it was, like, the most comprehensive dive into, like, what race is. So, hmm. like, if anyone knows what the fuck I'm talking about, please, for the love <laughs> of God, link it because I want to find it again. But it was th- – they're basically talking about, um, like, race exists it, – it, it's always existed in some form. Like, people have noticed that they are different than others in, in groups. But, like – you know, in the Bible, even, they say, like, you know, uh, you can enslave these other people from this other place, but not your own people. But still, it was more generalized. And you're entirely right. Uh, these col- colonists, they went to other places, and for the first time, they saw, like, all right, these people are, like, totally different than us. They must be, like, different categorically. Because the Romans, they had this idea of race as, like, you know, people are different, but we're all people. And that sounds really charitable, and I'm not trying to, like, I'm not a Rome apologist because they still did, like, enslave and kill people. But their their axis of marginalization was very much, like, like class-based. Like, you know, you're, you're a yeah. plebeian. You'll always be a fucking plebeian. You suck. Die. And Has your family that, owned land previously, or do they yeah, not? Yeah, exactly. And that's kind you know, of it. Do you have, it's, it's means testing. That was their axis <laughs> of, um, you know, marginalization. And then these colonials... It just they they they're like hmm these people are different, uh, they must be horrible savages who need to be, uh you know brought into our ways because we are prioritizing our own ways and this is so fucking pervasive that like it's still in media like we still see media about like the savages of this other planet or, or shit like that, you know yeah. it's Avatar, and uh, mm. it's fucked up. And um, yeah, and then you, in a way, it's like analysis gone wrong. You know, people are analyzing something about the world that is just so fucked up and wrong. That does not it does not have any basis in fact. I mean, that's why evolution's so scary to so to Christians, isn't it? Like that's why that's why evolution and trans people and gay people and feminism in general. There's it's so scary because it completely 
upends their worldview yep. and like they know that these things are true but it's more profitable and secure to keep people locked down under yeah like a lot of the issues that different small uh, different smaller marginalized groups face lead back to the same place so when we get into like oh well um P -p pan people are like really bad and oppressing by people by existing and also the opposite is true and like <laughs> hey hey hi hello you you would like n people who would hate you for put for the potentiality of being in a right. same sex relationship don't care what word you call themselves you call yourselves they hate you because they're gonna hate you and it, yeah. we could maybe stop like biting each other in the ass and go wow a lot of the issues that affect uh like lgbt people are similar and like a lot of them stem from really like race yep. essentialist ideas of gender that have been passed down from like england and, the, and europe yes. specifically and like they're also really subject to like a lot of really ableist ideas about bodies and and like a lot of the and like you that's why lenses of analysis are so important because you can overlap lenses it's like yeah. it, that's this is why intersectional feminism is so important because feminism without uh, acknowledging race without acknowledging ableism without acknowledging non -bi even non-binary people existing will always go back to white supremacy you will always loop back around to yeah it's uh it's, yeah. The, it's, the, it's the idea of a hierarchy and uh mm -hmm. my, my therapist put it in a way that i sort of rationalize it to this day is psychologically we put things into categories and this is very natural for us and it's very helpful in, in many cases because you know if you if you have a work if you're at work then creating these categories are good because it's like all right well i gotta I have this meeting at this time i have to do these things at this time i have these jobs to do and i feel this way about them so rationalizing those things is fine but people will rationalize things that are either not based in reality or like heavily bigoted and fucked up and human beings are very protective of those categories and so when you have people making these hierarchical systems that say you know uh that even something as simple as like men exist and these are their traits in my head breaking those categories for them is like this huge cognitive dissonance and you see this on like a national scale when it's something like trans rights because there are these people who are just so like illogically opposed to these things just because it is so antithetical to their worldview. And I think you're right is um, the only way to combat this is just analyzing this through a lens of like intersectionality. And uh, I think that's good. Yeah, like th there's a reason that I focus so much on like queer shit. Even if even if we're even if we're looking at a piece of media that only has straight ships, I will do something to like get to inject some queerness in there when we get to the shipping section. Even before, I'll like point out what seems to me like it's a little gay because like for me, queer sure. analysis means like queer analysis is really interesting because a lot of our our tropes in our history is in subtleties and and hidden meanings and and like stuff that that has a couple layers of irony just to get to what what you're really trying to say so because we've been so inundated with scraps it's so easy to find little bits of things that could be gay in all of the different places and that's nice but like to bring to to kind of bring this back around to stuff that we're doing in the Homestuck fandom, the reason that we came up with the idea for New Game Plus in the first place was one because I I read a lot of I read a lot of dystopian literature when I was a kid, and then when I was or into middle school and high school because the like dystopian YA was just what was being published. And oh yeah, that was huge uh, that during was huge. that time. And then I get my second to last semester of college i took a class about utopian and dystopian literature with a political science professor who analyzed utopias and dystopias on the basis of what they could tell us about the ways humans relate to each other and form relationships mm -hmm. and or, or form bonds with each other have friendships with each other and i was reading a lot of liter like speculative dystopian literature from the 1800s up until i think one that was published in 20. 17 and mm -hmm. most of what i got from that was 
wow, fiction does a really good job of describing how our lives could be different, and that can get to people. Like, uh, the two books that that inspired New Game Plus the most, which is a speculative Mm post-Homestuck, but... Like, post-Homestuck visual novel about what would happen after the the gods got to Earthsea that disregards the Snapchat epilogues, the ep- the black and white epilogues, and Homestuck 2. It starts, it just launches off on its own timeline after the yeah. comic proper ends. And the two books that inspired me the most to create this would be The Dispossessed by Ursula Le Guin and... No, sorry, three. The Dispossessed by Ursula Le Guin... Uh, Walk Away by Co- Cory Doctorow and Parable of the Sower and his sequel Parable of the Talents by Octavia Butler. Because those three novels did a really good job of illustrating <clears throat> for me how things really could be different. They're, they're books about yeah. being in an environment where, like, I don't know, you're an alien that's lived on a planet that's only had communism for your entire lifespan. You go visit a capitalist planet and you're like, whoa, what's a price? Why why can't you right. let me just take this out of the store? What do you, why are all those people not in houses? What's going on? Why aren't you taking care of yeah. everybody? What um, are you doing to the environment? Like the – it's it, – <laughs> all, all three of yeah, those I books like just kind of like creating an environment where you could question your reality because that's the point of di- like the point of dystopias and utopias is to shine a mirror a uh, a dark mirror um a black a, mirror uh, a, if you will a, an umbra yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, something of the like to shine a mirror back on society and say hey like the best dystopia does not make anything up they do not speculate at all they just take what's happening right now and increase it a little bit. Mm-hmm. I agree. The 1984 wasn't predicting the future. There were already totalitarian oh, yeah, yeah. elements in England in whatever the 1800s. Hell, surprise! Like, the, yeah, it's just a funhouse mirror. It's it's not. Um, the uh, the Handmaid's who are the Handmaid's Tale? I can never Margaret remember. Atwood. Margaret Atwood has said many times, uh, I did not make any th- this is not from whole cloth i i used shit <gasps> that was done yes. in other countries uh, yes, yes, that yes, is yes, huge yes. um not only that book so margaret atwood wrote the handmaid's tale and it's a very good book and i highly recommend it as long as you don't as long as you are aware that going into it there is co- like content warning for like sexual assault body horror uh racism and patriarchal control um but another fantastic trilogy by margaret atwood is the mad adam series m-a-d-d-a-d-d-a-m mad adam um the first book's called oryx and crake and now it may be a little hard to read right now because (laughs) most of the book takes place after a plague that wiped out most of humanity however the plague was man and it was engineered by a man who wanted who decided that humanity was a blight upon itself and he wanted to start the whole world over so he created Mm -hmm. his own race of of like by splicing dna together and okay uh, that is literally the fucking plot of splatoon 2's octo expansion i just thought that was funny please continue that that's hilarious (laughs) Margaret Atwood Continue. did potentially did write that before Splatoon did that though. Yes. Um, <laughs> and so the book follows. Not everybody died. There's still a decent amount of people around. The book, the first book, follows uh, like the childhood best friends of the man who did this, and like flashes back and forth between his childhood in a late capitalist society with mm. company towns and Ugh. genetic engineering. They're, and then they're making the, a comeback, you know. They are, and I want to die. Um, that's so fucking bad. Holy shit. The tenements are back. Company yep. towns are back. It's terrifying. Um, but the second two books are far more interesting because they follow um, a group called the God's Gardeners, which was an apocalypse cult, technically, that was uh, preparing for the end of the world by... They, they, they were solar punk, basically. Like, they reinterpreted the Bible to be solar punk as fuck, and then they were trying to... So, like, in this book, so many more animals were extinct than R and R than there are in our time. So they were, like, they dedicated themselves to, to the memory of, ex- of endangered and extinct animals. But th- the really cool thing about that series is, same with The Handmaid's Tale, Margaret Atwood used technology that was already present. The, um, the birds that could mimic human speech perfectly, it's based on Alex the Grey Parrot, who is an incredibly smart parrot who could, who could communicate with humans. The pigs that 
uh, the pigoons, I believe, that is the term that's called in the book, where there are these gigantic, oversized pigs that grow human organs in them, and it ter- that the, they mm-hmm. use to to grow human organs for transplants that also have human sentience. Those are based on real experience, experiments that were done on pigs. Like the list goes on. We went over yeah. this in that in that utopia dystopia class I was talking about. Speculative dystopias are always heavily grounded in reality because that's yeah. why they're so scary. Yeah, the uh, I mean that's why the ones that are are um, I mean the the Hunger Games ones are fun certainly, and uh, but th- there is a certain je ne sais quoi that I think it lacks, or any of those other um, dystopians from that time. Like I, I don't even well, know if you'd count Maze Runner, but like. Um, or there was one I read, uh, with my ex-wife, which was like a dystopia where love is outlawed, which was very sort of, you know. Did the cover have a girl in a green dress inside of a bubble on it? Yes. Yeah, I've read that one too. <laughs> um, and, uh, the, 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 they're fine books. I'm not trying to say that they're bad or anything. Uh, obviously Hunger Games was one of, like one of the most prolific series of our generation. What I'm saying is there, there's a certain thing that is missing when you create these sort of whole cloth dystopias uh you know things like brave new world or 1984 which have those elements of this actually happened um you know i would even argue that uh just for the sake of having you know pan am which is future america um hunger games is like a leagues ahead of of its contemporaries in that way it well, yeah. The Hunger Games was actually really, really good at delivering its political message, but only the books. The movies have like <laughs> oh, God, muddled. Yes. yes, the movies have muddled a lot of the message because in the books, Katniss is a is like Katniss isn't white, first of all, but um, Katniss is, like it really deals with like Katniss did not choose anything that happened to her and like you, if you're like oh well the ending's kind of disappointing because she seems kind of sad and blank but she's still like Mary <laughs> Peter or whatever oh. she has severe <laughs> ptsd that is yeah. never addressed and that's the point the point of the story is that katniss like is a little relatable yeah but she's an incredibly tragic figure wow. who like was in was taken advantage of on a massive scale and then was like dumped in the dirt afterwards and it's, yeah I, I think that, that's why i like the third book the most i think it's because it's it's like um, you you really do see how fucking miserable this makes Katniss. And what what really bothers me about these movies is the juxtaposition between the depiction in the books of the um, capital city people and the depiction in the movies, where it's like, this is cool, you'd want to live here. This is where you'd want to live if you were in this society. And it's almost like... In the books, these people are just hideous and fucking horrible, and they do weird shit to their bodies. And in the movies, this is expressed with, like, you know, a weird haircut, and that's it. Yeah. And it it just makes me kind of sick to, you know, it's almost, in in a movie, there's this, I think one of the hugest differences between movies and books is movies necessarily, they, you cannot have a movie that sort of depicts something in a bad light almost like anything in a movie to someone will be like there's that quote i don't know who it's attributed to but it's you can't have an anti-war movie right because if you depict war it's going to be cool to somebody yeah and in the same vein I, i think that books do have that strength you can depict something horrible and miserable but in a movie you can't like you know there's something so inherently uh almost you know magical and ephemeral about a film two two things about that one real quick going back to that book about with the girl in the bubble on the cover it is incredible how many straight people write what if love were illegal books without like thinking for five fucking oh yeah oh yeah that that is one of the AIDS crisis happens do some yes fucking research (laughs) that's one of the Um, things that i i thought in that um when i was reading it with my ex-wife uh, it was basically like we, we thought that was the point. We thought that was the point of the book of of like this is an an allegory for the straight people about you know being gay and uh, I don't know. It was kind of like we were waiting for the shoe to drop. Like you know, when is the gay person going to show up? When when is when will this happen? When you know? And then it and it never did. Never does because the authors <laughs> have no sense of self awareness whatsoever. Not yeah. even a fucking drop. 
There was, I, yeah. I remember one recently with the gender sniffing dogs that came out that was like, what if the what? prostate cancer <laughs> wiped out every man? And then there's one offhanded comment that says, oh, haha, yeah, all the trans women would have died too, lol. And then there's another, then there's a detransition trans guy who attempts to convince the cis boy character who she thinks is a trans boy that that he should also detransition. And there's a lot of loaded language around the main character, or one of the main characters where this mother is trying to disguise her son as a girl, so she's constantly misgendering him. And if you're a trans person reading it, it comes across like she's misgendering oh, her trans wow. son. And anyway, that was horrible. That was a horrible oh reading. If you ever hear me or Janiya throw around gender-sniffing dogs, that, that's where that, that came sounds, from. That sounds... So, that premise sounds awesome with a uh like gender critical lens or a writer but the well, fact that they not have gender fucking... critical or oh my god i'm sorry <laughs> uh, <laughs> i know i knew what you meant but also i was I like not that wrong, one jojo like, god damn it they really did be they they really did fucking uh steal that yep uh anyway <laughs> Not gender critical. That's a different thing. <laughs> That's a different horrible critical thing. Critical of gender. Uh, critical of gender roles. Way. I will say that. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I, I agree. It's it's um. But r- wrapping back around to the analysis yeah. thing is, none of these conversations could go on unless there was some analysis. So I think the at the end of the day, I just want to make analysis more accessible. And I already asked how, like, to make analysis more accessible in terms of, like, society. And your answer was, I think, on point. Like, I couldn't have (laughs) thought of a better example, which was, um, you know, fucking Uh. teach people about it. So what in a more, like, you know, interpersonal or or, uh, what can you do right now to improve your own sort of uh, analytical literacy? Like, are there any, you know, books or YouTube channels or anything you want to (sighs) plug? Gosh, I mean, like one of the, I, I, I realize that this isn't like a helpful answer. One of the things that really did it for me was like learning about political science and like learning about a different way to look at things. It, like, it, sure. I, I would specifically, I would seek out, um, like, God, I don't know. It, I'm trying to remember of like what, like I had some really good professors in college who really encouraged me to like think about things, but like really, I just. I, I can't recommend dystopian literature enough, honestly, like specifically the yeah. kind that like oh, really yeah. thinks that, about it. Exactly. Uh, Ken, Ken Robbins. Fuck. I'm gonna have to, I, I can like send some names to you to put in like the YouTube description, but like yeah. I, Octavia Butler, Ursula K. Le Guin, Corey Doctorow, um, uh, Toni Morrison, who doesn't ne- necessarily do dystopia, but has her, her, she writes about, like, being a black person and being a black woman in America, and that, that kind of is a dystopia, so Toni Morrison. Lol. Um, uh... Not lol, but fucking shit. <laughs> uh, no, I know what I mean, Like, just, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh... Do you, th- there's that I, fucking dystopia where it's like, oh my god, it's terrible. It's It's like... White people are the ones that are, because, like, the sun gets hotter, and for some reason, like, black people survive because they have more melanin, and all the white people are, like, I don't know. It's fucked up. That sounds like something a racist person would do. It's horrible. It's, it's It's, like, it's, like, it's, like, the quintessential fake woke book. I don't even, I I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to remember the title. It's, it's horrible. You don't have to. Anyway, continue. (laughs) Um, But, uh, one last author would be Kim Stanley Robinson. Uh, also really good. The, um, I forgot. I think I read Pacific Edge by Kim Stanley Robinson. It's, it's. Uh, one of his books, the Three Californias trilogy, well, three of his books, are about three different possible futures for Orange County, California that are really interesting. Um, He's done a bunch of other dystopian literature that's, like, with an ecology bent. But, like, I don't know. Dystopian literature is great because it... I was going to say this before. The reason that we're going that route with New Game... Like, the reason that New Game Plus is a communist utopia, like, 5,000 years past on Earthsea... Obviously, Marx said that we go from feudalism to uh, 
capitalism to socialism to communism. So definitely after 5,000 years go by in Earth C, it would have already progressed through all of those stages and gotten to fully gotten to communism because because instead of skipping the capitalist step where they didn't have any infrastructure and they didn't skip the step where socialist democracy established like an egalitarian society the went through all of those steps and the point is to the whole point is to say hey we think this is one way it could go what do you think and then (laughs) just say just say like look the this is one way it could go. Just think about it. Just dream. Just dare to think of what could be. Use and your noggin. Use your big old sponge. You think. And then do it. Pan. Like we. The another thing I would do, not just like readings or whatever. Get off the internet. Go out and meet the people in your community. Find out what the people who are living immediately around you need. Go to a food not bombs meeting. Try I to think, find. I think now the, this is transcended. Um, uh, analytical advice. And now, I know. I do just... mean. I do mean it, that it, this applies to an analytical context, though. You can't analyze stuff like the. I say a lot that like true scum trans people who like or, or trans meds to the the trans people who say there's only one right way, right way to be trans. Those people often transition either in isolation or with trans people who are who are almost homogenous, who have very mm-hmm. similar experiences to them. They're also often privileged and have a lot of money, but. Yeah, they, they um, all, those, a lot of them drink piss. I've noticed a lot of them. Yeah, uh, uh, isn't but, that weird? It is weird. But they um they have an isolated experience, and in order to get better at analysis, you need to expand your experiences, and that is going to include going outside and talking to real yeah, people outside. And uh, like, yeah, I I think you hit on something that is is sort of a nugget of like these fucking people who are making up dumb shit they don't know anything like they're just they're just saying it into the void and people are listening and they're getting platformed by you know the social media stuff which is sort of a necessary evil of mass communication but still it's like the more experiences you have the more i've noticed people trend towards uh if not leftism then egalitarianism of some kind like you don't need i don't know well, the things that we are going to need going into the future are people like people need to learn skills to survive. Right. Not everybody needs to know how to farm, but like there's a lot of skills that you need when you can't like if you can't get fast fashion anymore, you need to know how to repair your clothes. You need to know how to potentially make clothes, how to make clothes that grow with your children, how to make clothes that or the, how to, how to dress and for for differing weather without get, getting access to synthetic materials uh you need to be able to know how to cook maybe with local food maybe with foods you foraged maybe with food you bought from a local farmer or treated with a local farmer for uh how do you how do you do laundry how do you get stains out of things how do you clean efficiently and and effectively to make the space for you and the people who live around you safe not just in a like picking things up on the floor so people don't trip on, on them way but like like taking care of other people and being safe and and sterile and all and these other things during the pandemic like think about how long it took a lot of people to I still see people take off their mask by pulling it down over their neck <laughs> and then pulling it God back damn. up. And I'm like, you like the if you didn't know when you're not when if you pull your mask that's on your mouth down over your neck, your neck has been exposed to the air and has potentially gotten coronavirus on it, and you touch the inside of your mask to it, and then you put it back on your mouth. You have rendered the mask ineffective. Like there's there's so many different little things. How <laughs> to balance a masks. checkbook. How to, uh, how to like, how to, proper glove safety, w- proper food safety, uh, like how should you defrost meat? Where should you store meat in your fridge? What temperature do you need to keep your fridge at? How should you arrange it? I'm, I'm rambling, but like, there's so many things that we need to know. I, I, I like veered out of like anarcho primitism into just like living in a house with other people. But like, dude, you need to know how to communicate with other people clearly and. And in an understanding way, you need to yeah. like, you need to know how to like manage your own trauma that you've gone through in a way where you can still relate to people without foisting your issues onto them. Because you can <laughs> that could experience be a whole different topic is oh, fucking, God. 
Ugh. Just interpersonal relationships yeah. and how how do you exist when you and all of your friends are traumatized and fucked up, but you still need to get along with each other would be an entire series. Yeah. Uh, like, I think that, um, yeah, to, to your point, I think that people are just fucking helpless. Society has made us these weird, I don't know. Well, like, that's all we are right now is, is these, uh, you know, uh, we, we just work shitty jobs so we can have tokens to buy more fucking uh, shirts in, in, in packs at the, at the dollar store. And it's like, well, we, none of us know how to make food. None of us know how to grow anything. You know, this the it's illegal to like make, make – seeds are copyrighted, right? That's fucked up. That's – God, the so the opening <laughs> scene of uh, Walk Away by Cory Doctorow, it's mm-hmm. set in a future Canada. Um, the main characters are at a communist party, which oh means God. that uh, they are in Sounds a factory awesome. that is set to be demolished the next day, and the factory 3D prints beds. They are, they are having it 3D print as many beds as they can because they're going to try to take some, but mostly they're just using up the resources of the factory because the beds themselves are copyrighted, and if anybody, if they're used without like a digital key unlock i don't know there's there's basically like (laughs) play a little alarm so you can't sleep in it something like that (laughs) cory doctorow is heavily involved with uh like internet internet um not free speech on the internet kind of free speech on the internet like uh the base i believe he was involved with founding reddit i might be wrong on that but he's definitely involved in the founding of founding of boing boing.net and like uh has a lot of, like, Black Mirror-esque stories. Like, the one that sticks out in my mind is it's a short story told from the perspective of uh, somebody contacting a customer service center to try to ask why their dishwasher isn't working. Mm -hmm. And they're like, my dishwasher isn't washing my dishes. Oh, well, do you have the licensed uh, dishes that match your dishwasher that are produced by brand Oh, my God, it's like a printer. Fuck. And... And they're like, well, I took my dishes that I bought in Asia before I moved over here. And they were like, no, our dishes are region locked. You are illegally <laughs> using the dishwasher region with region locked dishes. dishes. Please, please stay in your home. And a, and a representative of Brandcorp will oh be here God. to seize your dishwasher for illegal use. Like it. Oh, my God. But that's not too far off, is it? That doesn't feel yeah. too far off, does well, that, it? That, that, that hits upon something else. It's like these invented crimes that mm-hmm. like capitalism makes up that that are just like so obsessed with uh private property and the extension of private property into like what can you you know it was it was bad enough when private property meant you know land but now private property means like stuff you think about <laughs> uh, uh you know well c- capitalism makes more money off of you if you rent things than if you buy them outright you rent yeah. your home you rent your car you you rent like if you have a mortgage on your car or your home you're still renting it you rent god i don't know yeah, you can rent you. basically anything now to, you can rent jewelry you can rent yeah people to do stuff for you and it just we are so we are not only reliant on buying things that we should be making but we have to pay for them over and over and over again it's um actually another another author terry pratchett uh, uh, Sir Terry yes, Pratchett of, of Discworld um, fame of Discworld fame the Samuel Vimes boot theory of economic inequality you can spend 10, 10 gold pieces or whatever every couple of months on the cheapest cardboard boots with thin soles and you feel the cobblestone underneath your toes a week after buying them but you wear them until there's literal holes in them and you can't stand the ice in your socks anymore and if you could save up the 100 gold pieces it would take to get those nice leather boots that would last you for years and years you wouldn't have to spend hundreds and hundreds of gold pieces on the 10 on the 10 piece boots that wear out but you never have more than 50 gold pieces at a time you can never save up that much because you don't make that much money so you will spend more over time on those cardboard boots if um if you saved a little money buying your starbucks and avocado toasts maybe you could buy good boots uh and then penny pinching won't make thousands of dollars appear (laughs) yeah i i think that the the thing about penny pinching is it it works for some things like I think it genuinely does work for say you know if I'm if I use a coupon then I can you know have enough money to buy like string beans or whatever, 
But like, yeah, or like it only I, works on that scale, my... right? Like I can't, I can't nickel and dime my way into a car. Uh, and I uh, might be able to, if I was like rich, but I got to pay rent dog. Like rent, rent has been, <laughs> rent is higher than ever. <laughs> like more than I half know. of my income goes into, into rent. And I know they all, the, like all these, all these grind Twitter guys will, will say like, well, never pay more than 30% of your income on rent. It's like, where the fuck do you live where that is possible? <laughs> Cause I'd love uh, to go there. I mean, friend. all these people are <laughs> fine working jobs that are like soulless and doing asinine bullshit. Like, cause the, sure. these, I got, I forget who it's by the book, the, another book, bullshit jobs. That's a great one to read about like what oh, the yeah. fuck capitalism is doing to our landscape and uh, like uh, work wise. Yeah. But I, this I, idea that like, oh, sorry, you go. I fucking love m- me personally. I love bullshit jobs. I love menial tasks. I love going oh. to work every fucking day saying no. hi to all of my friends. Um, that's what I like. I like, you know, I would love to work at, uh, you know, w- once once the fucking revolution comes, I would love to still work in customer service at like a coffee shop. I'm but I'm like, not talking about that. I'm talking about the jobs where like you you read about like like you see like an R slash am I the asshole post. Am I the asshole for working a job that I don't really have to do more than five hours of work a week and spending yeah, all yeah. day golfing while my while my wife is like a cpa or whatever am i okay. really an asshole for telling her that i don't really do that much at work like that sort of shit where, the, where like you know that there are dudes right. sitting on their asses in offices okay. that were business majors in college that that do that contribute jack and shit to the economy yes the, i, we, I uh, understand now uh, you, you mean we, bullshit jobs from like not not from a it sucks to do but from a this is a fucking it provides no value <laughs> right okay yeah. I, I understand we will always need people to to make and serve food and we will always yeah. want to like not make our own food sometimes we will we will not always need business majors sure. business majors do not interact <clears throat> it's um there, there's uh i don't remember what the theory is called but there is there there society is built on you know you not knowing how to do everything uh mm-hmm. I, I think it's certainly fine if you want to be a survivalist and like learn how to fucking i don't know eat you cultivate wild grains or something but like you know in a perfect society in my opinion you have like a guy who does this a guy who does that and you like know him and you can approach him instead of these faceless fucking corporations that just like hoover up your money and uh employ people at minimum wage and like there is no place for bullshit jobs in a world like that. There's no place for a guy who just sits on his ass and 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 plays Minesweeper on his fucking Windows ME computer all day. And it's like, like I I don't think that there is a job that is worth doing that someone does not immediately benefit from. Does that make sense? Yeah, like the like I think <clears> about. Excuse me. The way that stuff ideally, I, like you know, if I were if I were in charge of the world or whatever, which like isn't even the literally undermines the point I'm about to make. But like y- th- when you when you get into like a, you move into a new town and you're a plumber and nice because you learn because you learned from you you apprenticed with other plumbers and you learned it because you were really interested in like machinery. Yeah, I'm, and, a, I'm in the plumbers union. You're in the plumbers union and you're in the plumbers guild even. My name and, is Mario. Continue. Your name is not Mario. Um, we're recording this on March 10th. Um, the uh, oh wow, <laughs> um, it's Mario Day. Uh, Continue. I'm Woo-hoo! sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, you are you are a plumber, and you move into town, and they're like, oh my god, we've needed a plumber. Uh, here here's a house. Uh, S- Sally next door has it grows like vegetables. You go down the street. Bill runs the butcher shop. He'll give you your meat. Uh, you just you just have to like you know respond to plumbing stuff as it happens mm-hmm. and tr- and like do maintenance and upkeep around town on all the plumbings in our buildings. And then like that's your job. And what you get for it is a place to live and food and a community. You get you and get a little you get a little house, and on the on the front it says the plumber. Yep. And uh, you get a little mailbox, and and you can live there, and it's nice. Yeah. And then, and maybe, and then somebody else rolls into town, and they say, "I'm disabled. I can't do manual labor." And they say, "Well, can you can you read books?" And they say, "Yeah." And then you say, "Cool. We've needed a story time person for the ki- for the kids' sure. daycare." Like it's it's not only labor that we need. It's, it's not only manual labor. There are all sorts of things that we need. Or even I'm disabled. I do, I I cannot 
contribute to society in a meaningful way. And then they say, okay, well, we always have extra because we, because we, yeah. like, there's always enough to go around. We, we will always take care of people. Here's your house. Here's your food. Here's your community. We'll come check on you. What needs do you have that we can help you with? You right. do not need to provide a service to deserve to live. Yeah, I, I think I, I totally agree. And um, to end this, I, I want to give you a compliment that I just thought of <laughs> that is somewhat esoteric, but I think you'll get a kick out of. Um, every time I speak to you, Bucky, I want to go, like, live on a commune. <laughs> I, I want to fucking, like, get in my car and just form a commune with my friends every time I, mean, I speak to you. That, I mean, that is kinda, your effect. That's kind of the goal. Like, you want to inspire people to want to take care of other people. I would, Like, our, our, our yeah. life goal is uh, to, like, work up to a place where we can like build a community and a commune <clears throat> such like that my partner and i that's that's what yeah. we're aiming for i'm uh i'm not personally a communist uh i'm more of like an anarchist type uh not that there's not a lot of fucking overlap but i know a lot of communists and most of them are like sort of they're, they're not really like communists they're they're like marx acolytes and so they always have some fucking passage from Marx or Engels or, you know, a ContraPoints video or some fucking shit where it's like, you know, well, this would work if, if this and that. And they all, they have all this theory. And you and Janiyah both are like, you know, this is some shit that you can actually do, like, functionally. Or this is what an actual society would look like. And I really like oh. that because there's not enough of, of those kinds of commies. The absolute shortest thing that I can recommend for anybody listening to this, if you're like, God, you just told me to read a whole bunch of books and that sounds long. 45-minute mm. video. I know that sounds long, but that is a lot shorter than a book. 45-minute video. Bemundo Lack. B-E-M-U-N-D-O-L-A-C-K. Oh, yeah, yep, good. and it's... it's uh, Oh, what was it called? Finally, some good fucking praxis. Yes. It's like censored with, uh, with like symbols. But that is a forty-five minute video that really simply, very clearly, very concisely breaks down what you can do to actually make a difference. And like that, yep. you watch it that, and you that, leave that, it that, feeling that video, so inspired. That video made me like clean up a park. Which oh, yeah. did I tell you this story? Um, no. <clears throat> So um, there, there's a, a group on Facebook called, like, the Capital City Socialists, and mm -hmm. they were like, hey, we're going to do a park cleaning because, you know, they laid off a bunch of the people from the parks department who do that. And so we went to the fucking park at, like, 5 p.m. This was in fall, so it was pretty cold. It was me and some old people. It was, like, 10 people. Mm -hmm. And we just had those pointy sticks that you use to, like, poke garbage. And the fucking cops came and told us to leave. Isn't that, you isn't that insane? You did tell me that, and that, that's because you're right. That is it, that, it goes insane. back to that um, capitalism making up crimes. Like, that wasn't a crime. You yes. were doing that because you cared about your community, but you yeah. didn't have permission, and you weren't being, like, legally paid to do it or whatever. So, like, oh, well, that's labor that we're not, that you're not charging yeah. us for, that we can't make money off of. And then. I don't know. And, it's, it, it's fucking. Yeah. But that, that was the video that made me want to go out and do that. But, um. <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, just I'm, like. I'm glad we it's started not, talking about fucking leftist shit. Nothing feels better than making things with your hands for other people. Sometimes it's fan art. Sometimes it's writing. Sometimes it's picking up a bunch of trash in a park. Sometimes it's handing a hot cup of cocoa to somebody who's cold right now. And sometimes like, it's a podcast where you use <laughs> class backs to analyze various series. Sometimes then, it's an interview series where you take a look <laughs> at people doing cool stuff in fandom. Yes. Um, yeah, that, that's all I got for this one. I think if we continue, it'll just be like, instead of analysis, this will now be about like, Wrist. you know, the fucking communist utopia. But yeah. yeah you can just the, play uh, New Game Plus when it comes out in October for that. Hell yeah. This is the second <laughs> time I've shilled New Game Plus because I couldn't recommend it more. Um, it's a good, I mean, it's not, it, it doesn't exist yet, but it'll it's be good. coming. Oh, it's coming. Uh, but yeah, that, that is all in a month. That's all I got. Um, covered a lot of ground. I feel like these things get so out of um, off topic, like in the weeds, but like in a good way. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll probably I'll, I'll edit this pretty soon. Honestly, I think this is a better take than the first one. 
So maybe it was me good. Too. That, <laughs> maybe it was good that the first one got obliterated. But yeah, send me the uh, Audacity file there, and we can square this away. Um, I don't know what mm. date this is for people listening, but uh, the final, very final thing is wh- where can people find you, Bucky? Yeah. So you can find out about me personally at radicallydifferent.space. Uh, that's right. That's it's like my personal URL. website. Where I... Thank you. Um, it's where I've got like all the stuff about me and like I do – I'm probably rolling back on drawing commissions, but I do writing, voice acting, and graphic design commissions. If you go look at the at that website or the, the Will at Home website, you're trades. like, wow, that looks pretty good. I do that for you. I can do that for you. But also, my podcast is at willithomestuck.com. Yeah. That's that's just yeah. the uh, that's the whole thing. Yeah, that's uh, – go, go check Bucky out. Uh, Bucky works hard. I try very hard. Um, uh, and then, yeah, there's potentially another episode of Will at Homestuck coming out really soon, probably around when this drops, because I tight. we've been dragging our feet and I've had life stuff. I just recorded one, like, two life hours stuff. before we recorded this, so it's coming. Awesome. Well, I'm going to hit stop now on the recorder, mm-hmm. so everyone... Yeah, thanks for having me. And then, I, and then imagine me dabbing. That That's how I end this. That's good. <laughs>